¡Prende fuego! ¡Vamos! No Puerto Rican. Is that okay? Rachel, congratulations, first of all. Your Thank performance you. is stunning. Thank you. Uh, as a New Jersey theater kid, so happy to see you up there. Um, <laughs> I was wondering how it feels to be releasing this movie in a moment where the Broadway community is still very much kind of in a state of mourning over Stephen Sondheim. Yeah. Does it feel more significant that it's coming out now? Celebration. Absolutely, Eddie. Yeah, just as Stephen just said, it is a it's a celebration of his work. Um, we we all were able to have such a wonderful connection with him, whether he intended to give us that connection or not. Um, obviously, it's an honor that's not lost on me that we got to work with him so closely. He was very involved with our process. You came in, he he talked to us about the original process of of writing it, how he didn't necessarily intend on working on it at first but it was it was Hammerstein who told him hey it might it might it might be a flop but you should do it and and it was back when it was supposed to be East Side Story and it right. it was it was about Jewish people and, and Catholic, and Catholic people. people and so you know getting to hear those stories and also getting to hear I don't want to call them regrets, but things he wished he could change was just a testament to who he was as an artist. He was constantly creating and constantly cultivating his own craft up until his very last day. And so to be a part of his last few years of work um, by working on the thing that was part of his first few years of work is something I think none of us have taken for granted. I'll never forget that the, the uh, a week before he passed, he sent me a note. We, we, we became very good friends. Uh, not just over West Side Story, but because we both are cineasts. Mm. We are film mad, we, mm -hmm. and we know all the movies and all the movies from the 30s, 40s, 50s. We spent the entire year and a half of being in quarantine during COVID, literally exchanging films with each other from coast to coast and getting on the phone and, and, and long four-page emails about those films, these recommendations. And, and the last thing he said to me was, I cannot wait for Monday night. I cannot wait to see this with an audience. Because he saw the movie way back in February with his, with his husband, Jeff, and he said to me, I cannot wait for Monday night. And that is the saddest, because I never expected this to happen. Then he sent me a note just about a week before he passed, quoting the line that action says to anybody's. And he just sent me a very simple note. He said, he, said, he, he called me, I was SS2 and he was SS1. <laughs> And he said, he said, SS2, you, you done, done good, good buddy, buddy boy. boy. <laughs> oh my God. SS1. Just, SS1. And that was the last note That's I got amazing. from Steve. That's amazing. Frame yeah. that. It's certainly a loss for all of us, I know. Ansel has an amazing story um, working with Sondheim on this. Um, you should share that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so nice that. Uh, it's obviously so sad that he passed, but he sh deserves to be so celebrated. He was such a great collaborator. He offered so much to us. Um, I remember we were in the recording studio and, you know, sometimes you have good days and bad days. And at the end of a bad day, uh, we were in the elevator together. And he told me the only thing he said to me in the elevator and before and after this, he only said the most important thing a young performer can have is confidence and didn't say anything else and I think about those words all the time um, and it it's so spill it's so son time because he also said when I asked him hey how, when you write a song what how do you try to come up with your lyrics and he said it's about simplicity and trying to get the message across in the most simple way possible mm -hmm. that sticks with people and those words that he told me have stuck with me. Yeah. The most important thing a young performer can have is confidence. Yeah. I, I mean, he was such a lover of this, of what we do, and, and obviously uh, stayed a, a part of the theater community up until, you know, the day of his passing. He was still showing up and supporting artists and supporting pieces and theater and uh, it, it's a tremendous loss but I think then on our premiere Spielberg said it perfectly of like he'll always be with us for his, for everything that he has given all of us so yeah and this movie yeah. is significant I think because it celebrates him so that's why it, you know I'm glad that he's being celebrated at this moment it's it's good timing yeah. what what a legend you know I think you know, with with his passing, it it 
brings a new meaning to the moment. This moment is not what we thought it was going to be, but I do think it's a moment of celebration, you know? This was uh, a, a piece that, you know, Stephen Sondheim worked on at the beginning of his career, and yet it's one of the last things um, that he was able to give to the world, because he was yeah. very much a part of this. He and, and Steven Spielberg had a beautiful, beautiful working relationship on this. It was actually kind of fun to yeah. watch their bromance <laughs> um, during during this production. But um, I think it is, it's such a beautiful blessing to be a part of the Sondheim legacy, and what better way to celebrate his contribution to the world, because his words, the words that he gave us, and he gave us copious amounts of words, will live on, and I think this is such a beautiful springboard into to what those words will come to mean now that, now that he has left yeah. us, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we all, I was in the, screening and the applause when his name they, popped up on the credits isn't you know it's so it just, great it just felt, yeah, yeah. It's well done, and it does yeah. how unifying you know there's not a single person who loves you know broadway in particular and quite frankly just art in general who probably doesn't have a sondheim story yeah you know it's so many people yeah. have experienced his work in one way or another it's like you know What's the one Sondheim song that changed your life? Everybody's got one. That's the mark of a genius. Not since Shakespeare have we had yeah. someone whose contributions to our community have been so epic. He's epic. And, yeah. and this movie is epic. So it's, I don't know, it's just so fitting. Yeah. I think. And his words will live on way past, yeah. way past time. So it's, it's just incredible that we were fortunate enough That's to bring awesome. his words yeah. to life and, 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 and bring this story to life for the next generation. How just, lucky we are to yeah. have breathed yeah. the same air. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. <laughs> life matters even more than love. The violence in this version feels much more real uh, it's not dance violence, there's dancing and then there's violence. Uh, I was wondering how you kind of helped to raise the stakes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I you know, uh, Lieutenant Shrank is, uh, he's not a good guy. I'm not gonna, you know, the, we, did, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't change him that way. But he has a job to do. And for all of his biases and blind spots and uh, uh, pro problematic worldview. He's he he is trying to stop the violence from happening. That he that is his job, and that's what he's trying to do. And um, you know he's he sees that the that that these groups are going at it over and over and over again, and he's he's just trying to stop the bloodshed on his streets as he sees it. Um. It was very interesting, and I, and I think this is kind of like a Stephen trademark almost, where he he like juggles between realism and fantasy, um, and he does this in all of his movies, where there's there are moments where you're kind of lost in a fantasy, and then it cuts back to reality, and I think that's just this beautiful storytelling ability that he has, and to be able to do that through dance, through singing, through the acting, and all of these numbers was incredible. Um, and in the rumble, I just remember we wanted the audience to feel the fear of what it's like to be in a knife fight, you know. Um, and I, that was the most important thing. These are, you know, Riff and Bernardo. They're two young kids, pretty much. They're just two young kids who are way in over their head. Um, and then they're faced with the realization of, oh, this is we're in this now and this is scary and I don't know how to get out of it at this point. So it was very important for, um, you know, I talked with Mike Feist about this and we both agreed that this should be something that we're, we're just terrified and Steven also really wanted to show that, um, that yeah. fear. Tony, I am scared. There won't be any fight. You know, this film version, it's, it's such a visual spectacle. It's so beautiful to watch. And there's so much new cinematography, but I was wondering if there were moments that you just couldn't uh, change from the original or visual uh, cues or homages that you just had to include in this version. There's only one homage to the 1961 movie. Um, and it, it, it kind of shows us the difference in terms of the polite kids in the 60s and and these kind of juvenile delinquents from you know from our version of 19, the 1950s and it's just simply when 
when uh, okay. during the Jet song, <laughs> when the, 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 there's these two young black kids and they're they're doing their chalk white chalk designs on the sidewalk, and all the Jets literally scuff through their work and ruin it, mm. as opposed to in the original '61 film, they dance very around. Wa- walking around <laughs> the circle, the little girl was up up, up chalk, chalking on the basketball court. That was really the only wink. And, and of course, and the other thing that people were a little confused about is I did not cast Rita Moreno in this film because she was in the 1961 film playing Anita brilliantly. She won an Oscar for it. I cast her in the film because we reimagined the character of Doc. The Doc is dead and his Puerto Rican widow has taken over the store. Mm-hmm. And we could only imagine Rita Moreno because she's such a great actress. And she so represents the entire country of Puerto Rico that we really felt that that was the reason she should be in our film. I really think there was no better way to usher this authentic Latin cast yes. than having the original only Latin cast member only, from the 1961 one. film. Right, right. You know, you bring so many new sides to Anita in this version, including your scene with Rita Moreno. I was wondering what advice did she give you or lessons or moments that, you know, impacted you the most during this process? Uh, you know, Honestly, she didn't give me much advice aside from empowering me to just lean into everything that made me unique. Um, yeah, I don't know that she actually said it to me, but she said it around yeah. me. Uh, she's like, you know, I love that she's Afro Latina. I love that, you know, because there's there will always be comparison, but you cannot compare these two Anitas. They have completely different lived experiences. Like, sure, they have inherently similar qualities, but that's about it, you know. Like, this is a very different portrayal, and it was a fascinating experience. I think I'm still processing what all it actually was. <laughs> yeah. Rita just brings such a positive energy. She's such an inspiration. She can sing and dance, and she's so humorous, and yet she can, you know, she can be really serious and give uh, just, yeah, just be a great presence to be around. And then doing the scenes with her, She's like an actor's dream as a scene partner because she's very unexpected, very in the moment, impulsive. Uh, and then between the takes, we were literally like, just got along swimmingly, we are dancing around between takes, uh, literally tapping back and forth, tap jamming. And this is an 88-year-old woman, by the way. Um, and then in terms of the, the character's relationship, I do. it's so important because I think she's like, she is sort of like teaching Tony how to love and have that soft spot. And like almost without that relationship, I don't know if, um, if yeah, Tony wouldn't be that same character. She's kind of like a mother figure to him. Run away with me. You don't want to start maybe with, I'd like to take you out to coffee? I was very taken by the way that you and the amazing Tony Kushner really fleshed out the characters in this story, including this, a lot of the supporting characters, Graziella, Chino. You know, these characters make much more sense and their backstories feel really palpable. Why was that an important adjustment to make in this version of West Side Story? Uh, Tony and I both felt that West Side Story needed to speak to this generation, uh, which is a lot more complex than the generations of 64 years ago who first went to to New York to see West Side Story on the stage or, or saw the 61 film. There's a lot more expected today from the audiences today because there's so much more nuance and there's, 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 there's so much more complexity in just the way we relate to each other, the way we speak to each other today. We wanted this still to stay in the 50s, mm. but it needed to speak the way young people today listen. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that this fell on uh, alive ears. So these characters were at once relatable and if you could relate to them, then every single emotion in West Side Story is kind of, we double down on, on it emotionally because when the characters are real, then what happens to the characters is much more real for the audience. Mm-hmm. You know, part of the conversation wasn't, this is how we want to change it or fix it or anything. Um, you know, it was really about, this is the story that we have from the original play and expanding it. You know, I think Tony has such a, brilliant and broad view of the way society works and people work in society and and how power uh, imposes itself. And Stephen is just such a empath. And, um, you know, th- th- that, that combination was, w- was really great. And, 
you know, uh, I, I think, you know, we had we talked about it, but it was all on the page, and it was all about just showing up on that set, seeing how Steven and Janusz Kaminski were setting up their shots. That you just you got a sense of what this world was, and um, and it was just such a joy to to speak the language that that, that Tony had written and. and you know, the character just sort of came from that. Mike, the Broadway fans out there, myself included, we know you from obviously your 20 nominated performance in Dear Evan Hansen. I was wondering if you can compare what it's like working and doing eight shows a week versus trying to have the same energy eight takes in a row. Uh, what is that difference for you? Um, same, same rules, different playground you know we're, we're still trying to do the exact same thing uh, in terms of what we're trying to accomplish I, I think more psychologically I keep saying like you know with theater you always get to show up and try again tomorrow like you know I go home and I'm like oh, I need to do that I, or I could do this better or something you know so I get to show up again tomorrow and then at the end of the day you're trying to go to bed and you're like damn it that was it yeah okay and we would have conversations about that all the time. I yeah. remember like, just being like, damn, I, I could have done it this way. I could have played it this way. But you always had a great attitude about it. Maybe yeah, you were just yeah. trying to be a good friend. And you were like, yeah, what are you going to do? Like, you, you did it. And that, that was right in the moment. And that's it. you could always try it another way. Yeah. And that's the beauty of art. And that is the beauty of stage. Right. That's why I, yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to do next. But that's what I mean. It's just like, you know, it's that practice of like letting go and just allowing and being present and, you know, just accepting, having fun. Amazing! Yeah.